What's going on everybody, Jeremy D here back again and today it's a cold day in Kentucky. I'm sitting here in my truck on my lunch break and I'm uh, trying to bust through this commentary real quick. I had a few points I want to hit on Ghost as far as the things that I think are either OP or need to be fixed. Uh, I think I have four main points I'd like to get to, uh, different things that I've seen other people talk about. You know, I'm not the first one uh, covering these. Only one thing I think that I'm going to talk about that I haven't seen somebody else talk about. Um, hopefully this glare coming in from the window isn't isn't uh, hurting us too much, but I don't typically do face cams. I just figured I'd give this a try again and uh, kind of see how it goes. Seems like a lot of people out there use face cams and people like to know who they're watching or what they look like or whatever. So if you haven't watched any of my other videos and this is one of the first ones you're catching, this is me. I'm Jarmy D and uh, welcome to my channel. So let's get started. Uh, in the background you're going to see a little free-for-all gameplay. Um, my first Juggernaut Maniac, actually, I uh, was kind of surprised when I got it. I was kind of playing, uh, you know, a little bit strategically uh, for me. I'm still trying to adjust and adapt to the way my Ghost uh, gameplay is. I tend to be a rusher, and rushing doesn't seem to work as well in this game, especially when you're not as uh, skilled with the uh, accuracy if, with your gun as I am. But anyway, that's beside the point. So, first of all, I would like to start out talking about Riley. Now, Falcon1974 did a really, really good video on this. Uh, I suggest you go and check that out. Uh, his channel's up in the uh, left-hand side of the screen. Well, my left hand, your right hand, I guess, up there in my suggested friends list or suggested suggested channels list. So you go up there and check out his channel, and it should be fairly high up on his uh, recent upload list uh, where you can watch that video he did on Riley. But he basically broke down and went in and saw how many shots it took to kill Riley. And basically it takes eight direct shots in core and I think six to seven shots in hardcore, which is just completely and utterly ridiculous. I mean, every time I get this dog, he may kill one or two people and that's it, you know. I don't understand how other people can keep their dog alive for so long. I've watched some videos where people have gotten five, six kills with that dog and I just can't seem to pull it off. You know, I don't know what I'm doing differently. I don't know if... My dog's just stupid. I don't know. You know, it, it seems like every time I get the dog, he'll kill maybe one guy if he uh, sneaks up behind me and I don't directly see him. Or if I see a guy coming up a window and duck around a corner, he'll run out and get him. But most of the time, I lose Riley really, really fast. And I tell you what, I get killed by Riley really, really fast. It seems like every time I turn a corner, somebody's got that daggone dog on them. And by the time I pump a few bullets, the enemy's already on top of me. You know, I'll be running backwards and that thing is just utterly utterly fast and I know dogs are typically faster in real life than humans but at the same time even that dog's wearing a ballistics vest and you're shooting him in the face there's no way that dog is going to last through eight shells out of any gun you know it's just ridiculous something needs to be done about this you know I, I wouldn't care if it's a four or five shot but eight I mean come on guys that, that's just plain ridiculous so like I say Falcon did a whole lot better job going in depth on this so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it and go over and check that out uh, the next thing I'm going to go over uh, the most recent video I saw on this was from Frito, and Frito did a really, really good job about explaining the uh, buff that Jug needs. He knows a lot more about the Juggernaut from the previous Call of Duty. I believe it was Modern Warfare 3, Modern Warfare 2, I, I forget which one it was. I wasn't a big online gaming guy through the, both of those cycles. Uh, I'm basically just a Black Ops guy, and I started online gaming with Black Ops 1, but I've been playing FPS, and... Call of Duty since the very first Call of Duty came out, but I was majority of the time a single player player because there was no internet option at my house. You know, it was very, very expensive to get what internet we could get, and it was horrid. You know, you can't even get dial-up at my house. Uh, you know, I live so far out in the country, so just recently I've been able to hook up with a 4G uh, Verizon, uh, I believe it's called a home fusion setup, so now I can actually get on there. But Basically, what uh, Frito said, I completely agree with. You know, Juggernaut, he moves around the map like a sloth. And these maps are so big that there's, I mean, why would you want a kill streak that slows you down half the speed? And even when you switch over to the pistols, it gives you a little bit of speed. But the best I can tell, changing in between weapons, there is no real, you know, there's not a quick, quick swap, fast swap, whatever you want to call it. So it makes it really, really hard to use the Jug. Now, I've never used the Jug because I've, already heard people complain about it and I'm not going to waste my time. Plus, to get an 11 kill streak for me is very, uh, very rare unless I play real campy and real slow and that's just not the way I like to play the game. I don't care if I die 30 times and kill 10 people. You know, I'm, I'm playing the game for fun and 
I'm going to run around and shoot and play the way I want to play. You know, eventually maybe it'll start working for me and may not. You know, I may get tired of the game. I may change my play style. You know, I'm kind of trying to adapt a mixture of slightly campiness and slightly rushing to try to offset some of my uh, uh, KD. You know, I'm not one that really cares about KD, but my KD in this game just really, really sucks. Next thing I want to talk about. Saw this on... Uh, Apocalypse's channel, I believe, uh, last week or so, he was talking about the things that he need that he believes need to change, and one of the big ones that I agree with is the IED. Now, the IED, just like the Bouncing Bettys and the Claymores and things, you know, they are they are good and beneficial for a camper style. You know, you have something to watch your back, so you don't have to constantly turn around. You know, I understand why they're there. However, I just like Apocalypse and a whole lot of other people feel that this needs a big time buff. I should be able to hear this thing just like I did the Bettys. You know, I should be able to, and, and considering it's not a Betty, it doesn't bounce up over your head, you shouldn't be able to lay down and get away from it. I mean, it's basically a package of C4 with a motion sensor on it, but surely there's something they can do to give you a little bit more warning and give you a little bit more time to turn around and run the other way because people are still going to be stupid and not hear it and run right into it it's not like it's going to be a big difference i mean i know people that run with bouncing bettys all day long on black ops 2 and get you know three or four kills a match and everybody knows how to get around those but if you don't move fast enough or you don't react fast enough then you're still going to get killed by it so i really think that uh, apocalypse is right on this I, th I think you really need to do something with the ied setup because it doesn't kill me a whole lot, but when it does, it's very annoying. You know, if I'm beginning a streak and I come around a corner, it, it, it's just annoying. And I don't want to run sit rep. You know, it just, it's just, to me, it's a waste to have to run sit rep. I mean, you should be able to play and enjoy the game without being able to see every piece of equipment on the game. Plus, it wastes, you know, I believe it's a two-point perk. You know, that, that's just a waste of a slot to me. And, and some people like sit rep, some people don't. You know, I'm not a big fan of it. Uh, I see the advantages to it. But I also see the disadvantage and the fact that you you know you lose room for other perks that are very vital. And this game has so many perks in it that you really need every bit of help you can get. Now, the final thing I'd like to talk about, and this is the one that I've not seen anybody talk about, and I don't know if Xbox is the same way, but the friend invites and the join session in this game is just ridiculous. Half the time when I go to my friend screen to see who's playing and I hit the button to either join session or invite to game. I can't join session. It's It's got a little lock beside it. It doesn't even allow you to click it. They'll be in a party waiting on me and I cannot join their session. Why? What, what sense does this make? It's freaking retarded, if you ask me. You know, I'm sorry if the word retarded offends you, but this is just ridiculous. There's no, no reason that they should have changed any of that. It worked perfect in Black Ops 2. It works perfect in Black Ops 1. It works perfect in Modern Warfare 3. Now, they, they fixed it a little bit, but initially you had to hit the PlayStation button and back all the way out to the PlayStation menu to invite your friend to a game. That's just stupid. It's like 15 steps to join up with your friends and play. Why do we have these games? So we can go on and play with our friends. Why ruin that for us? It's such a simple, simple thing. I can understand, you know, screwing up jug, screwing up weapon balance, screwing up everything else in the game but come on guys i want to join a game with my friends i should be able to click on their name hit join session and be done with it they shouldn't have to hand, send me a friend request and i know a lot of people have problems with people joining their sessions especially big youtubers that you know are out there their screen names are out there they'll be playing a game people try to jump in a game and it kind of ruins it for them but give us an option to turn it off don't just take it away from us completely. Don't require me to get a friend request from a friend. Because then I have to send a message to the friend. Tell him to send me a friend request. Because my internet doesn't host very well. You know, if I if I get everybody on my internet, you know, team of four or five, it just doesn't, it's not set up to do that. You know, I can join session with somebody else and it runs just as smooth, just as fine. But I notice when everybody joins up with me, it just slows everything way down. So please, fix this so that I can join with my friends a whole lot easier. It's just completely ridiculous that you all changed this the way you did. And another thing on top of this, why do these screens look so rudimentary? I mean, it's like the, they took no time to make any of, the, any of the screens look good. You know, when you click your friends button to see your friends, can you make any sense of that? It's just a blocks of, of names and goofy pictures. And, you know, it's just ridiculous. I mean, something so simple 
and you screwed it up. I mean, just royally screwed it up. So please, please, if you do nothing else on all the other things I've talked about, please fix the friend invites and join session because it's ridiculous. I mean, I, it, it's killing me. The only time I play Call of Duty typically is with friends. I play by myself every now and then when I need to try to get a gameplay. But I don't find myself enjoying Ghost as much as I did Black Ops 2, so I don't play by myself a whole lot. You know, I, I picked up The Last of Us recently, which I've, I've watched a bunch of gameplay on. It's a pretty decent game. I've just kind of got started in it. And I've also started playing Borderlands 2. So when it comes down to it and I have the option to get on and play Ghost by myself, Borderlands 2, or Last of Us, or, hell, Grand Theft Auto 5 for that matter. I'll jump on all of those if I'm playing by myself, you know. The only the main reason I use Ghost is to hang out with my buddies and talk to them and stuff when I'm not, uh, you know, able to go out to their house or if I want to sit home and have a few beers and, you know, still shoot the shit with them. So, if uh, if you guys like this commentary and you agree with all the ideas that I had, which, like I say, basically most of them are stuff that I had noticed but I've seen other videos on I also mentioned all those people's names they're all in my suggested friends page so just go on over their channel check them out uh, if you could let them know that I sent you over there uh, I'm a really unknown youtuber but I want these guys to know that I, I I'm on their side you know I agree with what they do I agree with the ideas they have and especially Frito Frito is the best about coming in and giving you an explanation on what he would do to fix it. He doesn't just tell you what's wrong with it. He'll tell you what he would do to fix it. He gives valid reasoning. You know, some people may not agree with his reasons, but you can't argue the fact that the man did not sit down and think, think really hard about how he would fix it and what he would do. And, you know, I respect Frito for that. You know, a lot of, I, I don't know, I, I was starting to say a lot of people, but I can see where some people, uh, don't care much for Frito because of the way that he kind of comes across at times. But hey, to me, Frito's just being Frito. I mean, he's just being honest. He's being straightforward. And he's not shooting a bunch of crap up your ass. He's not blowing smoke at you. So, you know, hey, props to you, Frito. So once again, like I say, if you guys like his commentary, leave a like, leave a comment, and let me know what's going on. We'll see you guys on the next one.